Karen Berniston, the designer of Pop It Up's products for Elizabeth Craft Designs. And today I'll be teaching how to make this. This is the assembly video for die number 1205, the flower pot pop stand die. I'll be making this project in the video today. It is going to show all 12 of the pieces that come in the die set and how you can combine those to make a cool pop-up card. The design team has also been making some fun cards like this one by Kelly Booth. I like that she kept the flaps of the pot up. It actually looks more like a takeout container that way. The pot's going to be a generic little container for all sorts of themes. This is another project by Kelly Booth, and this time she used some of the new holiday charms to fill the pot. Another fun feature of this die is that it can just be collapsed and mailed as a box card. And what I like what Karen Aiken did here is she created this little circular stand for the base. So she did incorporate the pop stand to make it collapse, but it's not in a traditional card. Okay, let's start with the pot itself. So there is a die that cuts basically half the pot, so you need to cut that twice. So you can see that I've done that here. You should be able to stack those two pieces of cardstock and die cut it at the same time. It's a nice big open die. Similarly, there is a die that cuts two pieces of the lattice work, but you need to cut that twice so that you have four pieces. The pot has a little tab attached to the side and that's what's going to attach the two halves together. And my favorite thing to do is to find all the folds in the flower pot before I even start. Doesn't really matter which way you're folding it because right now you're just finding the folds. So I find all the score lines and then I'm going to flatten it right back out again. So definitely choose a strong adhesive to attach these to each other. I'm using the 6mm double-sided adhesive tape from Elizabeth Craft Designs. I'm just going to peel that tape up and attach that tab underneath the other half. And then after it's attached, just go ahead and fold it in the center and make sure the two sides line up nicely. And then when you open it back up, you should see the tab. Now you're inside the pot. That's really where you want to be working is inside the pot. The lattice work pieces also have a score line out on the ends and it's at a little bit of an angle so take a second to find it and in all four pieces go ahead and work that fold in both directions so that it's good and trained. So let's take a freeze and look at these pieces. Out on the end those tabs actually have a little angle to them. See how they're all sort of pointed downward? That's how you want to arrange them and then you'll notice that two of the pieces have the notches at the top of the piece and two of the pieces have the notches at the bottom of the piece. Okay, this is my preferred method. You might come up with a better way to get these four pieces together. I start with this piece here and stand it up and then put the other one and notch it in. So now I've got a little X there. Now I'm going to lift that up and slide in the other one underneath that first one. Now I'm holding both of them while I put the final piece in. So the idea is that you're just making a little lattice work with these four pieces. And when you have it all put together, all four of those tabs out on the end will still be pointed in that kind of downward direction. But you can actually collapse it down until it's a single line, just like that. Take a look there and you see all four of your tabs are still pointed downward flip the whole piece over, it looks identical on the back side. And those four tabs, those little downward facing tabs, those are where the adhesive goes. So I'm going to go ahead back to my six millimeter double sided adhesive tape. Doesn't really matter. I like tape for this, but you could use like a little glue dot. Um, glue might be a little tricky. I would definitely use probably a dry adhesive for this. But basically just get some tape in all four of those tabs and then you just need to peel up the liner to make them sticky. So these four sticky tabs are what's going to be used to attach the lattice inside the pot. What I want to do is I want to take my lattice piece and make sure that the center of it is right over the center of the pot. And then for how far down to come, I'm looking at the outer tabs and making sure that they line up with the score line there for the flap of the pot. So that's why it's nice to fold those flaps first because you can really use those as a guide. You don't want those tabs to come any higher than that score line. And they should line up pretty perfectly. They were designed to line up perfectly. You can see that the lattice is going to open just fine once we get the other half attached. And now it's just a matter of adding the adhesive to the four top tabs, keeping everything in a nice straight line so don't let it all come out. But add the tape now to the four tabs on the top. The six millimeter tape works really well for this. Just add that tape to the four tabs, peel up the liner so now all four tabs are sticky. 
So in the process of peeling up the liner of the tape, I've gotten a little wonky here. I want to just make sure it's nice in a straight line again before I start attaching. And now what I want to do is I want to look for the side that has the tab. So look for the side of the pot that has the tab. That's the side that should come in first. That's going to attach the pot to those two sticky tabs, but still give me access to my other side tab, which I'm going to need to attach the other half of the pot. So that's why you want to do that side first, because now I can peel up the liner of that tape and I'll basically be able to connect the pot to itself and to the final two sticky tabs all at the same time. Okay, let's watch the magic happen. Just go ahead and open that up. You can see the lattice is going to expand. Go ahead and keep on collapsing in the opposite direction and give everything a really good squish. That way your pot is trained in both directions. It won't matter which way you fold it, which way is forward. It's going to work in all directions. Another nice look to it is to actually fold down the flaps of the pot. Uh, that is optional. You saw that project earlier from Kelly where she left those up, so that's completely up to you. You could also actually glue them down. If you wanted to fold them over and glue them down, you could do that as well. You also have decorator dies included in the set, and those will cut side pieces and flat pieces that are just a little smaller so that they leave you a nice little shadow. You do get two sets of identical dies since you do have to do four sides of the pot. You can stack your paper, if you're using pattern paper or something that's not too heavy, you should be able to stack two together and cut through two layers. So it's still one time through your machine, just have two pieces of paper under each die. And then I just go ahead and decorate all four sides of the pot. Two of them won't be visible very much in the finished card, but that way you don't have to worry at this point, you know, which side is forward. You can just decorate them all and it's good all the way around. Okay, let's talk about filling the pot. The die set comes with three flowers, a big one that has some score lines in it. You can see those there. And then there's a medium and a small. There's a butterfly and there is a vine of leaves. For the big flower, it does have score lines in it, but that doesn't mean you have to fold them. You could just leave it nice and flat, maybe stack your three flowers together, you'll have a nice flat layered flower. Or on this one, I shaped just the medium flower. Now this one I shaped the petals with valley folds, this one I shaped those petals with mountain folds. This one I actually cut a wedge out of the flower, made it a four petal flower, but very dimensional. Now for my project today, I'm going to make a whole series of layered flowers where I am going to go ahead and take advantage of the score lines in the big flower by folding mountain style up the middle of every petal. So after I find all the mountain folds, I take each petal, I pinch it like a mountain, and then bring it towards the center. So I pinch the petal, bring it towards the center, and I'm just going to go around on all five of my petals this way, pinching like a mountain and then bringing towards the center. And what that'll do is it'll find all the little valley folds between the petals. And at a certain point, after you've done all five of them, you can't even squish it all towards the center and then open it back out. So that makes a nice dimensional geometric flower. If you'd like to soften those score lines, I'm just using something round, like this is just the end of a gel pen. But you could also use a ball stylus. There's even a tool set that Elizabeth Craft Designs sells for using for shaping flowers. And you just want to make sure that you're pressing into something soft. So I've just got a piece of fun foam here. Again, you can get a really cool pad that's designed just for this if you really want to make a lot of flowers. Okay, but here's what I've done is I've just kind of softened all of the score lines. Now for the medium flower, my gel pen cap is probably a little bit too fat. So I'm just going to use a ball stylus. And I'm doing the same thing is I'm just kind of just going in the back of the petals and just kind of rolling that stylus around into something soft. So I've used fun foam here, but you can even use if you've got like an embossing pad for your die cutting machine, that usually will give it enough give as well. But like I said, if you think you're going to be shaping lots and lots of flowers, go ahead and invest in the tool set. It's got everything that you need. You can get the little pad as well from Elizabeth Craft Designs. So for the smallest flower, this is kind of a fun option. There is a stamped flower on the Occasions Clear Stamp, and the hole in the small flower is designed to line up with the hole in the stamp so that when you cut it out, you get a nice little border around the outside of the stamped flower. And I've just put a glitter dot in the middle of it. And then what I'll do is I'll add glue to my shaped flower. I'm just going to go ahead and put that small flower on. I haven't even shaped it yet because when I press in the middle with my ball stylus, it will both shape the little flower and attach it because I've got glue in between the layers. And now let's take a look at the finished shaped layered flower. One nice thing to do with the butterflies is to use wire and put two butterflies back to back around the wire and you can even make little wire antenna coming out the top and then I just use glitter dots up their bodies. 
And I'll save those for later, but one thing that I do like to do for wire when I'm trying to attach wire to the flower pot is go ahead and cut another piece of the lattice work with double-sided adhesive on the back. So basically I have a sticky piece of lattice that I can cut into little pieces that I know are going to fit into the lattice to help reinforce connections or to add wire. Another way to reinforce connections, especially with the vine, is to glue a vine on to one piece of the lattice and then go ahead and add a second vine behind it to the back of the lattice glued to each other and that will really kind of stiffen it up quite nicely. Now you can add decorations anywhere you want to. You can combine those pieces in all sorts of ways. Flowers at the bottom, vines at the top, vines at the bottom, you know, it doesn't matter. Any where that you want to on that lattice. You can add those pieces and in different angles, it doesn't matter. Just go in and decorate to your heart's content until you have a bouquet of your liking. And it's really kind of impressive that it does just fold down nice and flat. So that could be mailed just as a standalone box card or it can go into a pop-up card. I'm gonna put it in a pop-up card so I'm gonna save my butterflies until I've added it inside the card. So with Pop It Up's card size is always up to you. One of my favorite sizes for this die though is five inches wide by six inches long. That will still fit in an A7 envelope. This is the pop stand die and it has a little arrow shaped hole in it to help you know which way is forward. So the arrow should be pointing towards the front of the card with the alignment nubs right over the fold. Placement along the fold is up to you, but you do need to be a little bit closer to the front than the back, so not centered because of the size of the pot in the closed position. So the center part of the pot, so the seam between the two halves, will be right in the point of that pop stand in the closed position. So you can look out here at the top and just make sure that you have a nice amount of space that it is hidden, you know, when the card is closed. And that will help you determine where to put the pop stand. But you'll see that it is definitely closer to the front of the card than towards the middle. So just be aware of how that's going to sit in the closed position. A little temporary tape is a great way to hold that down while you roll that through the die cutting machine so that your alignment nubs stay right over the fold of the card. Pop stand dies always cut tabs, but in the case of this die, those tabs are actually diagonal. And you can bring those up to kind of work the folds and that pot's gonna sit down right over the top of those tabs. So you'll want some adhesive on the top of the tabs and then you can peel up the liner on that tape to make it sticky. Okay, now hopefully your fingers are small enough, maybe your pinky finger at least, to get in there into the hole that's left by the tab because I think that's the easiest way to attach it is to actually hold the pot over the tab, get your finger through the hole behind the tab, press it with your thumb on the other side. So you're basically pressing the tab inside the pot. It will attach just in the corners there but on the back two panels of the pot. First time you close it, you're probably gonna to have to train it. I like to use the back flaps of the pot up and the front flaps forward, but that's completely up to you. You can always give everything a really good press in the closed position, make sure those tabs are really secure inside the pot. You can see it's now collapsed down nice and flat, and then when you open it, it will expand. If I wait until my pot is installed in the card, then I'll have the option to place those butterflies kind of as high as possible to still be hidden by the card in the closed position. So I just used that little trick where I had that self-adhesive piece of cardstock that would fit in the lattice. And I can always bend the wire to get the butterflies down into the limits of the card. One of my newest Stage It stencils is the Stripes Slash Plaid. It's number S015 and it makes a very nice diagonal stripe. You can think about that being used for candy canes and things like that for holiday themed cards but you can also make plaid. So what you do is you wipe off your excess ink and flip the stencil over, and then just use the same color back through the stencil from the back side of the stencil, and that will give you the alternating stripes that make a very nice plaid. You can clean the stencil and start over again, just offsetting the stripes from the first color, and then you'll end up with a multicolor plaid. So lots of ways to use the stencil to get very cool stripes and plaids. And you can see how nicely that finishes out my card's interior. Little stamped greetings, some rectangles, an extra flower, and my interior is done. Okay, decorating the front. I want to be able to cover that little hole where the tab was. So I've done my plaid stencil again on a piece of cardstock, and I've just cut it down to where it's big enough to cover up that hole. But then, of course, I have to avoid the hole with the adhesive. So the best bet here is going to be for me to add my glue or tape to the front of the card, just staying in from the sides a little bit because I know that I've cut my decorator piece down a little bit smaller. 
And then I also cut a piece of solid color cardstock for the back of the card as well to cover up that hole. Now the front of my card's a very simple decoration, just another one of my layered flowers, the same little ribbon I used on the inside, and the word celebrate from the Flourish gift frame set. Remember I said an A7 envelope, which is a 5x7 envelope? That's why I don't mind my butterfly sticking up so much. I could tuck it back in, but I've got room in that envelope, so I'll probably just leave it peeking out. It folds down pretty nice and flat. I think you might be able to send it for a single stamp. Well, I hope that you feel inspired to try this for yourself. If you need to know about any of the supplies I used in today's video, you can find them in the description box on YouTube, along with a link to the blog post. If you follow me on Facebook, Karen Berniston Designer, you will be treated to daily inspiration. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and you'll always find more ideas on my blog, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching.